Welcome back to the Grumpy Vet Garage. I know I've mentioned a couple times the uh, 2G DSM that I own, so I figured I would go ahead and give you a tour of the car. Um, it's I've had it for a few years, since the 90s actually, probably 99 or 98, I can't remember which, I think it was 99. But uh, I've done a lot of work on it, not so much cosmetic, it still has the original paint that needs some work, but I figured I'd go ahead and give you a tour of the vehicle. So I'll start with the outside and start from the beginning or the, the front, the nose, and then work my way to the rear. So, well, let me, let me back up. Before I do that, um, the car is a 1996 Eclipse GST. It was converted to GSX or all wheel drive a uh, year and a half ago bought a donor car it was a good looking car but had some rust issues that were uh, not worth really trying to fix but it had all the parts i needed to convert my car to all-wheel drive so i went that route and then parted out what was left of that car so okay let me go ahead and move forward with uh the tour then so in the front um, it has a 97 to 99 the 2gb front bumper it's on a quick disconnect, mainly because of the front lip and the height of the car it's sitting on coilovers. So with it being low, it's difficult to get a jack underneath the front. Also, it has 97 and 99 style uh, headlights. Uh, the hood is uh, a carbon fiber. It's a VIS carbon fiber hood. It has arrow catch hood pins on it which is needed because I ran the car when I first got it um, for a while without hood pins, even though it's recommended. And she went all the way back. She actually pushed up against, came loose and pushed up against the uh, windshield, broke loose. And I had to get a new windshield. Um, but that's when I realized, okay, they, they recommend. It's not a recommendation, it's a requirement. So haven't fixed the hood. Very well may not. Kind of remind me of of that particular moment pretty scary trying to drive the car looking out the side window moving around again paint's not so good but i'm not too awful concerned with that it's riding on 18 inch uh, gram lights uh, black the uh the brakes you can see are a, a two piston from a gsx but it's using the larger outlander brakes and Outlander brackets, so you can actually get an upgrade on your brakes on your Eclipse by running basically Outlander uh, crossover SUV brakes on the car. Everything's stock here. Uh, have a have a racing seat on the interior mainly because uh, uh, I was a little bit large and broke the original seat. Uh, have a Momo steering wheel on a quick disconnect. I'll go through the interior a little bit more. Uh, there's a couple gauges to show. Not not too much to show in there, really. Uh, moving along to the back. Nothing crazy with the rear brakes. Deleted the antenna. It stopped working anyways. And also deleted the rear wiper. It needs tent. The rear wiper doesn't really do all that much. As long as you keep the car clean, the water pretty much uh, comes straight off the back. Um, exhaust on it is a thermal. Thermal research exhaust pulled that from the other car and again it still has a GST badging but I'll show you if it'll come in it is definitely all-wheel all drive and move it along to the other side also again interior I'll show you the interior but airbag delete um, that is installed in the car okay now looking under the hood um, it is a built engine built by a company that i believe doesn't exist anymore a uh, slow boy racing from orlando florida it's a 2-3 stroker um, it has 272 cams from crower and it is a the manly stroker kit so manly crankshaft manly rod manly pistons the head gasket is a standard comedic multi-layer steel gasket um, it's been converted to run the later style cam position sensor. Um, injectors that are in it are 1150s. 
and their uh, high impedance. Uh, the intake is a sheet metal street intake um, from uh, JMF. Throttle body is an S90 throttle body. I know some people have had problems with S90 throttle bodies. I haven't had any issue, but then again, this isn't exactly a... I haven't been racing this vehicle. Uh, silicon elbow, not in love with that. That's, uh, that's a problem for higher pressures. Uh, the blow-off valve that I'm running is a, uh, a tile blow-off valve. Uh, standard K&N intake into a uh, FP green, force performance green turbo. Running a tile blow-off valve right off of the uh, O2 housing. The downpipe is also a thermal research. For cooling, uh, Mishimoto uh, radiator. The intercooler is a front mount um, ETS. Uh, it's the four inch thick. It's a thicker, a thicker uh, ETS and it's mounted straight to the bumper. Not the best mounting it to the bumper because you really have to cut back the bumper to make it actually fit and clear. Uh, as far as boost control, running a, a Mac three port, which is being controlled by ECM link. Also it's uh, running speed density. So I have a uh, air intake temperature and, and map sensor to run the uh, speed density and make sure I'm not really missing anything. Uh, I haven't removed power steering. I know it looks that I have removed it. I've relocated it. And I'll show you that here in a second. Running two fans. They fit pretty good. I think you can see that. Let me see. They're running two fans. Also running external oil cooler. Again, this is maybe, maybe me going a little bit over the top. So I have pretty large lines that have to run all the way across. I saw this new Mishimoto oil cooler and I was like, I'm going to get this thing. So I got this oil cooler, which is about the size of like a large dictionary, huge, had to make some bracketry to hold it. You really can't see it. Had to custom weld a steel bracket to hold it. Very large. It's actually at an angle to actually get inside the bumper. Don't recommend doing that. It's a, it's a bit much. Uh, I know probably in the comments somebody's going to be like, that's crazy how big that oil cooler is. You don't need that. You'd be right. I don't think I do need that. <laughs> but that's what I got. And I think I decided to work on making it work to make uh, my bad decision work out. So it's been good for, for now. But I would definitely make sure to measure the size of your oil cooler before you turn around and do a project like that better than I did. Running a uh, generic catch can. I think it's styled after Mishimoto, but it's not a Mishimoto. It's just a standard eBay catch can. Also running the uh, Gen 3 Eclipse master cylinder. Still running the factory clutch master. And then fuel lab for control on a uh, fuel pressure. Tried to run a fuel pressure gauge. It couldn't, couldn't quite get it to work properly. I'm still working on that. And coil on plug setup. So it's using 300M uh, coil plugs. There's plenty of wiring. Uh, Jopro Mobile, for instance, uh, does a really good wiring on coil on plug. There's also a few different individuals that show the proper way to trim down the boots on the 300M. I'm not running an amplifier on it. I had an amplifier, really couldn't get it to work. Um, now that the car is getting older, I haven't really decided that I'm going to race this car or of any kind. So it's more of just a driver. So I'm not too concerned about the fact that I don't have amplifiers. But again, in the comments, people are going to say, why did you do that? Uh, the factory coils are better than this coil on plug setup. And my answer to you would be, I think you're right. If this is a cleaner solution than that, but as far as better performance, you're, you're right. It probably isn't the way to go. 
So I think that's it. Everything underneath. Uh, oh, clutch. Uh, so it's an ACT streetlight flywheel. And then the, uh, the clutch itself is from TMZ. Um, I cannot remember the exact model, but it's Kevlar on one side and I want to say carbon on the other. Um, it, it should have good bite. I've barely broken in this clutch. So I really can't give you any kind of words on like, oh, hey, it'll launch great or it'll launch this or it'll do that. I, I really don't know. Um, battery, of course, has been relocated. As you can see, trying to get the grommet to go through to the back was a bit of a pain. Um, transfer case has a brace, the Frontline Fab brace on it. Again, I thought I was going to race it at some point, but not really. That was rebuilt by TMZ as well. They did a really good job. Um, coilovers sitting on D2 racing coilovers. That was pulled from a donor car. That wasn't the ones that I, I had chose for myself, but I must admit going from just lowering springs before to the coilovers, this is the best the car has ever rode lowered. Um, the only better ride it ever had was uh, when it was on factory springs. So I would recommend a good set of coilovers compared to some cheap coilovers. Coil cheap coilovers are not the way to go. Um, ARP hardware as much as I could. Oh, uh, I did upgrade to uh, an Ohm Racing harness. You probably can't see it too well. Maybe you can. There's the harness. Ohm Racing. Should I get their emblem in there? No, I can't. Trust me, it's Ohm Racing really nice piece you gotta wait a little bit to get it but it's very customizable and everything works you know it's got provisions for air conditioning anything you need so it's a good piece and definitely a way to go if you are pulling out your factory wiring um air condition is back in the car for the first time since probably early 2000s when i first joined the air force ac went out being a poor airman really couldn't afford to put ac back in it but now that i'm old can't really deal without it so AC is back in it. So moving around to the back, I want to show you the power steering and the battery. So trunk's pretty well gutted. Um, battery mounted with a cheap Chinese mount. Uh, made a mount out of angle iron. So I'm probably going to get clowned on YouTube about that's not going to work. Um, well, it's working at this particular moment. Had to use rib nuts to to get it secure in one spot utilize factory threads on one side but rib nets on the other it's working good it's very solid but i i don't know how uh maybe that's not the best way to go i know some people would again would probably clown me and say why would you do it that way but that's how i did it of course have a uh, circuit breaker um, but the power steering so i have a uh, Volvo power steering pump mounted in the back. Uh, really like it. Feels really good. It is a little loud. Um, not too awful concerned with that. The car in general is pretty loud. But yeah, there it is. Um, you can run it straight with like a three wire where it is just ground and power and then a trigger. But there's a, a company, and I cannot remember the name of the company at the moment. I'll put it in the description. Gentleman in Europe sells a controller to control this, this pump. Because if not, it's going to go into limp mode. And then in limp mode, it's a pretty loud, it's a noisy, it's a noisy pump. Um, it'll work, but it, you almost have a feel as though there's too much power to the pump. That the pump is too powerful. Which is, which is not very good at high speeds. It feels like any little movement and you're darting around the road. So it's too much. So with this kit, let me show you in the interior. Let me just hop in the seat. Need to fix my door handle. Me and everybody else that owns a 2G has a bad door handle. But um, the controller is in the back, but you have a potentiometer knob that you can actually turn down the power steering or turn up the power steering. I have it on the lowest setting, but if you turn around and whip the steering wheel back and forth, like even in a parking lot, it'll lag. But that thing's taking a lot of power too. So you, you're not really wanting it to draw that much power, but it has a good power steering feel. And if you ever feel like it's not enough, you can just turn up the power steering feel. 
They have a GPS model as well. If you want to do it where as you speed up, it changes. I didn't like that idea. I thought this was, was a better way to go. Um, and I'm, I'm liking it so far, but yeah, uh, Momo steering wheel, forget the model. Not really something easily, easily looked up. Um, quick disconnect, uh, from NRG and then use their, let me see if I get that in there, use their short hub. Let's see if they can see that. I like this. It maybe looks a little bigger, almost like a paddle shifter. I don't really know why it needs to be that big. A smaller one is just fine, but that's what I got. Um, gauges kept it pretty simple. So I got air fuel ratio. These are all X series gauges, boost, and then oil temp thought would be important. Still maintaining, uh, you know, the oil pressure on the actual dash and of course fuel and, and coolant. But with ECM link, you can change the boost gauge here to be something else. Like I have it set up to be a voltmeter. So in the middle, I can tell that I'm my battery's charging or not charging. Um, that's pretty much it. You know, I did a black headliner, put in a black carpet because the factory carpet looked bad. I mean, it's an old car. It's, you know, it's 96. So I got to put this panel back on, but, um, this is the car. Wanted to introduce the car to you guys. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I, I know I'm missing something else. What am I, what am I not mentioning? Uh, Volk Racing, that's something, I'm sorry, Volk Metalcraft, I'm sorry. Volk Metalcraft, I have Volk Metalcraft solid bushings, front and rear. There is not a huge vibration difference. I would say it tightens the car up. It would be worthwhile if you wanted to have a nice tight car to put in the Volk Racing solid aluminum mounts. Um, also did the diff mounts. I really haven't noticed anything. There's, I mean, the car vibrates anyways. And I also use their tow arms because the tow arms in the rear on these are notorious for seizing up and being rusty pieces of garbage, which this one, it was, it had rusty, rusty bits on the, uh, on the subframe. So when I changed that out, um, I was able to put it in. Maybe I can get a shameless plug for, for Volt Metalcraft if I can show it to you. Um, you can see him right there, but of course it's not showing the, uh, Oh, you can see the bushings. Um, but yeah, that's their arms. R really good stuff. Really good stuff. Um, I know I'm probably forgetting something here. Uh, one piece drive shaft from the drive shaft uh, shop, which definitely helped out with the conversion because then you're only having to weld in one bracket rather than weld in two. Um, uh, Jason Drew has a really good write-up on all-wheel drive. I mean, everybody knows who he is as far as 2Gs. Uh, used his videos, long videos, on how to do the all-wheel drive uh, uh, conversion. Recommend reviewing anything he has. Watch every single video he has, tell you the truth. Um, is that it? That might be it. Again, I'll try to put a list of what the mods are um, on uh, down in the description. Also, my full list of mods for this car is on uh, DSM Tuners. Uh, my handle uh, on DSM Tuners is uh, Dino4G63. So, if you want to see any of the mods on this car, you can see it. But I think that is it. I hope to do more work on it. But I mean, I've I've done quite a bit of work on it now. Um, there's not that many more parts. There's more stuff from from Volk Metalcraft that I want to get. But with other projects, uh, my A90 Supra, uh, my Duramax over here, um, it's uh, not as many things for this one more it's more general maintenance on it but if you have any questions about my my 2g eclipse um please you know put them in the comments i'd love to talk to anybody about this car i love this car and i really enjoy talking about it also if you see anything that i did that was wrong point it out i'd love to talk about that too uh, in many cases if something's wrong i might already know about it and i may have done it for a reason maybe not a good reason 
but uh, again you know i'd love to start a conversation with uh with the youtube community about my 2g dsm so if you haven't already uh, please uh please like this video uh, subscribe to my channel if you're interested in uh, anything related to this eclipse or anything related to my duramax and then hopefully some upcoming videos about my a90 supra um, i would appreciate all the support that you can give uh, grumpy vet garage but until next time, uh, see it.